A few weeks ago, my brother-in-law, who works in clearances, house removals, office clearances, that sort of stuff, was going to the tip, and and while he was there, he saw a woman throwing out a PlayStation 4. Yeah, another PlayStation 4. This PS4, he spoke to the woman, he saw that she was throwing it out, and he asked her if he could have it. I'll pop some pictures up on the screen now. So obviously, as you can see from the pictures, he was in his truck when he took the picture, but he also took a picture just to prove that where he got it from because he knows I like to do these videos when people throw consoles out and he sent me a picture to say, yep, now you can prove where I got it from. But basically, apparently the guy who owned this had rage after losing on FIFA. So to teach him a lesson, his girlfriend, wife, whatever, threw it out. So yeah, it's in a bit of a state. It's definitely seen better days and I can hear something rattling around inside as well, but it should be interesting to see, number one, what kind of damage has been done and number two, if we can actually get the console working again. So if you are new to the channel and you like this type of content, I would really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and turn on the bell notifications, that way you don't miss any future videos. And I do offer repair services, so if you do want to organise a repair, check out the website in the video description, consolefix.co.uk. You can book in the repair or get in touch if you've got a question about a repair. And if you do need parts and supplies, consolefix.shop, that's my online store where you can get all sorts of parts and tools, including Kester solder. I sell this in 50 gram packs because it's, you know, most people don't need a whole pound of solder. Uh, it is genuine Kester, I'll just unreal it off the reel and package it up and sell it into 50 gram uh, packages. So, yeah, check it out, consolefix.co.uk and consolefix.shop as well. But without further ado, let's get into this repair. All right, so as you can see here, it's definitely uh, seen better days. Apparently, it got thrown down the stairs. So a few people say to me quite often, oh, you seem to, see, you seem to find quite a lot of consoles on the scrap or in the tip or whatever. And the reason for that is because I've got two brothers or brother-in-laws rather, who work in that industry sort of thing. So my twin sister's boyfriend is a scrap man, so he occasionally finds consoles. And then my other sister's boyfriend, he does clearances. So he does commercial clearances, he does all sorts of stuff. He works for a company, doesn't run his own business like my other brother-in-law. But yeah, he works in clearances, so he gets me all sorts of stuff, like tablets and stuff. Usually they just need like reinstallations and things like that. But yeah, let's see first of all what's actually wrong with this. Um, apparently the button isn't the best on this, the, the, uh, the tactile buttons. But I'm sure we'll be able to fix that. This is the 1200 series PS4, so it's the third revision. So let's see. It has been opened before as well, by the way, as you can see. Or at least it appears to have done. That one... I'm not so sure. But that one seems intact, but it seems like it's been opened on this side, and I think there's a couple of cracks on the case as well. Let's just have a look at what's going on. And, okay, it seems to have a two-second blue light of death. Yeah, okay, so it's just shutting down. All right, let's take a look. It's kind of interesting how people just seem to throw them out. It's quite sad, really, because, I mean, a lot of the time they can be fixed. I don't know if this one's going to be fixable, but a lot of the time they can be fixed, and people just throw them out because they don't realise how easy they are to fix or how cheap they are to fix as well sometimes. Let's just have a look. Okay, it's a bit, little bit dusty. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Let's just see if... Whatever's rattling around inside falls out. No. Nope. There's definitely something in there, though. So if this has been thrown down the stairs, it does stand a chance that it could have a damaged power supply. When these take a big impact, like because that can that can withstand normally. These can withstand, you know, like a small drop or something. You know, if you knock it off your um, television stand or knock it out of your media center or whatever. It can take a little bit of an impact most of the time, but then it can't take the bigger impacts. And what can happen, okay, there's nothing rattling around in there, but what can happen is it can knock some of the components off in the power supply. So that's always a possibility. But I think first and foremost, we need to figure out what the hell is rattling around. Okay. 
so there's that. Right, so I wonder what it is that's rattling around. I think it's probably under the case. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well. Someone's tried the washer trick. Hmm. Well, that's why the top got taken off then, I guess. Alright, well, please don't try and do that as a permanent fix. If you feel like you've damaged your APU or you feel like the APU has got a solder ball issue, it needs a professional reflow or reball. The washer trick is just going to make it worse over time. Right, okay. What on earth is rattling around? So this board has never been out. Uh, it's still got the factory thermal paste on and things like that. Wait, was it that? I mean, apart from the dust bunnies, there's nothing else in there. I think it was that screw. Um, I don't know, maybe someone's just left one out and I just didn't notice and it's just fell out on me. It's not too bad. Well, actually, oh, maybe. All right, fine. Yeah, it is too bad. <laughs> That's a lot of dust. So I'll give this a brush down. Um, you know, even if I can't get this working, I'm at least going to be reusing the case at some point, or at least the, the mid frame. So there's the housing brushed down and cleaned out. That's good enough. Nice and clean. I'm just doing this while I'm in here. I might as well do it. Um, like I said, I will, if I can't fix this, I will salvage parts off it, like the disk drive, the fan, the housing, uh, and they'll all go onto my online store. There she goes, there's the fan, and there's the housing. Clean enough. Clean enough. If I did resell it, I'd wash the housing completely, I'd just strip it all down, but at the minute it's good enough for me. Uh, my brother-in-law would get this back if I manage to fix it. So if I manage to fix this, then I'm not going to be reselling it or anything like that. He wants it back. Um, he's just giving it me to do a video on. But if I can't fix it, then I get to keep the parts. That's usually the deal that we do. So let's just clean off this thermal paste. So the reason I'm doing this is because I want to inspect the APU itself and make sure that the die is not cracked. So this part here. So this is the substrate around the edge of the APU. This part here is the actual APU itself, so the, the GPU and the CPU, and that's called the die. So I want to make sure that the die itself is not cracked because if that was cracked, it's game over, unfortunately. So let's just have a look. and It doesn't appear to be cracked. So that's one issue that we see on PS5s when they get dropped is the APU itself get, becomes cracked on the top right corner. So whenever we get drop damage, I always test for that just to see what the deal is. Okay, so it doesn't appear to be any physical damage, or at least not what I can see. So yeah, I'm not seeing any physical damage on this at all. So I'm thinking it's probably damaged the APU. Unfortunately, if it's damaged the APU, that washer trick that the owners tried, or that someone tried on it, maybe they took it to a repair shop, I don't know. But that washer trick isn't going to work if it's damaged the APU, you know, severely. In that case, it would need a reball or a reflow. Uh, normally, I try a reflow first because if it's cracked solder balls, then a reflow is going to fix it most of the time, especially when it's down to impact damage. So sometimes just reseating things can fix it. So always try that first. And if that don't work, then I'll make sure I get 12 volts. If I don't get 12 volts, then we could have a power supply issue. If I do get 12 volts, then we've most likely got an APU or RAM issue or some sort of a BGA issue. Hmm. And uh, no. Okay, so that didn't fix it. Let's just try it without the hard drive in, just in case the hard drive is damaged. The fan does try and fire up. But yeah, it's a two second blue light of death. Okay. Right. So do we get 12 volts from the power supply? That's going to be my next question. Right, that's grounded. So 
do we get 12 volts? We do. So we do get an initial 12 volt. And then when it shuts off, it, uh, it drains it, obviously. But, yeah, that's telling me that there's most likely an APU issue here because we get 12 volts, which means it shouldn't be a power supply issue. It's very unlikely that it's going to be a safe bridge issue. So the safe bridge is responsible for some of the power rails, but it's doubtful that it's going to be that because the fan does attempt to fire up and it shuts off after two seconds. So the two second blue light of death, which is what this is commonly known as, is normally caused by one of two things. It's normally caused by a power supply issue or it's normally caused by an APU issue where the contact on the APU, the solder balls that contact between the APU and the board become either cracked or, cracked or warped or something like that. Let's see if we get anything with the thermal cam there. So let's see if anything actually fires up at all. That could give us an indicator as to what's wrong. By the way, people keep, people keep asking me what model thermal camera this is. It's a Unity UTI712S. It's a pretty good thermal camera. IP54 rated, waterproof or water resistant. Um, half decent resolution. Not the best, but certainly not the worst either. Let's just see what happens. Okay, so it would appear that not even the RAM is turning on. And I believe the APU needs to turn on before the RAM. So we're not getting any heat spot from the RAM at all. Does my... Okay, my disk drive appears to turn on. The safe bridge is located just here. And my safe bridge is turning on. My RAM isn't. So the RAM and what appears to be the APU, none of that is turning on. So I think this is most likely an APU solder ball issue because of impact. I wouldn't normally just go for reflowing and uh, reboiling the APU and things like that, but I think in this case it does warrant it. And the reason for that is because it does have apparent, it, well, according to my brother-in-law and according to the woman who was dumping it, it does have impact damage. So, yeah, it's a fairly common thing. And uh, unfortunately, that means reflowing the APU. If that doesn't work, then we do potentially have the option of reboarding it. So what we want to do is, first of all, clean off that thermal paste, even though it's fresh. We're going to have to put the motherboard onto the BGAB workstation. And that means that we're going to have to put a lot of heat in this one specific area. So a BJV workstation, it's essentially a massive infrared heat gun. And it's going to evenly heat up the area and allow me to work with a large chip such as this one. You can't do this with hot air at all. So what I'm going to be doing is heating the chip up until the solder balls underneath the chip melt. And then nudging it a little bit, reform those solder balls and then let it cool down and once it's cooled down I'll power it on and see if it powers on. If it doesn't power on then like I said I have the option to reball the APU as well. That is always an option. So what I'll do is I'll add some flux. So this is going to help the solder to flow and prevent any kind of oxidation. I'm going to add flux on all four sides i use Kingbow RMA218, by the way. Okay, there we go. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set up my camera so as it's on the BJV workstation, and then I will set up the profile, start the process, and we'll reflow this APU and see if that fixes the issue. I know it does seem like I'm just jumping straight to reflowing the APU, but in this case, like I said, I do feel like it's warranted because of the impact damage. Right, so you'll have to excuse the quality of audio change and the video change as well. I've got to use my phone for this because I don't have a camera set up over here. But this is my BGA machine. This is an Achi IR Pro SC and it's a professional rework station and this essentially allows me to use infrared instead of hot air and safely reflow chips or remove big chips as well. So 
It's a very expensive machine, but it is well worth it. Uh, this cost me about £500, but they're worth about a 1000 I bought this used. But it's a very good, very decent machine. Uh, but basically what this is going to do, we've got two dials here, or two clocks. And this left clock here is for the top plate. So that's for this one just here. And that's an infrared heater. That, could, that allows me to focus heat directly onto a specific area. And then this clock down here is for the bottom plate, which is these ones here. So this top plate's actually been modified, hence the, uh, the bottom job wires. But this is a Elstein plate, so it's the more expensive plate. Really high quality, really good stuff. But uh, essentially, this one is for the temperature of the top plate. So that's the current temperature, and that's the temperature that it wants to be at so it's obviously not active at the minute and then this one it's the same that's the current temperature that's the temperature i want it set at so i've got the bottom plate set at 220 degrees celsius what that'll do is when i press start in a minute this bottom plate will heat up until it heats 220 celsius and then the top plate will kick in it doesn't kick in exactly at the right time but i've got the profile dialed in so as it kicks in in seconds roughly around about when this bottom plate is fully heated so that will distribute heat all across the board and it will heat it up nice and slow but then the top plate will kick in and it will focus directly on this section here so if we move this out of the way you'll see i've got it directly above the apu so it'll focus heat directly on there and then when it's ready i'll come in with a pair of tweezers and just give the chip a tap and nudge the chip so as the solder balls basically reflow realign themselves and hopefully fix this issue so let's just hit start and you'll see that this one here will well there's a timer here where it's going to kick in so it'll kick in in like 10 seconds time and then you'll see this temperature here. Oh, actually, that's already started. All right, then. So I've got this one set at zero degrees Celsius for now. And the reason for that is because I don't want this top plate to kick in until there's heat evenly distributed across the entire board. So I'll have it for the first, I think it's 240 seconds or so on zero degrees Celsius. And then it'll go to, uh, I think they call it a partition. Then it'll kick into partition one and essentially then that'll go to 100 degrees celsius so then the top plate will kick into 100 degrees or it'll heat up to 100 degrees celsius uh, it'll hold for like 30 seconds and then it'll go to partition 2 it'll go to 140 hold for 20 seconds or so um, and then it'll just slowly increase to 160 180 200 and 220 but it never has to get to 220 it's just in case it's extra cold inside the workshop but it never actually has to get to 220 degrees Celsius. You'll notice I've took the battery out because I don't want that to go boom. But other than that, it's pretty much just doing its thing. And I've just got to wait for five minutes, seven minutes, something like that in total for this to actually go through the profile. So this is a predefined profile and I set this a long time ago. I've never had to change it because the temperature is pretty regulated in here. It's generally around about 17 to 18 degrees Celsius. And it just doesn't have to change i don't use the fans until i've taken the board off because otherwise it's just going to blow heat away and it's just going to waste electricity so yeah i'll pause the video for now and i'll pick it up in a minute when the reflow process is kicking into the top plate okay so this has just hit 200 degrees celsius on the bottom plate according to the thermal coupler so there's a thermal coupler just in the middle I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get you to see this, but there's a thermal coupler right there in the middle, and that detects the heat on the bottom plate. But as you can see, that's, that's just kicked in at 210 degrees Celsius, so it's pretty dialed in. It heats up at around about 0.8 degrees per second, and I worked that out, like I said, a long time ago. Unfortunately, every machine is different. Like, for example, mine is modified, so the top plate heat profiles are going to be different to that of a standard actually IR Pro SC so I had to dial in the temperatures and the settings when I actually set it up unfortunately like I said every machine is different it's going to depend on how many times it's been used uh, your electrical output and stuff like that so this is a very high powered machine I think the bottom plate on this is 2400 watts so it's very high powered but 
we do have another thermal coupler here i don't use them because like i said i've got the temperatures pretty dialed in so i don't really need to monitor board temperatures a lot of people do and a lot of people swear that you have to monitor the board temperatures but i just don't feel like i have to because like i said i've got it pretty dialed in and set up the way that i like it and set up pretty much so as he he does the job perfectly without any kind of interference or any kind of monitoring we are getting close to being at reflow temperatures here don't worry about the browning on the flux there we go so you see the chip moving I'm going to hit stop and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this five minutes roughly just to cool down okay so like I said earlier on you'll have to excuse the shakiness of that video uh, the clip that I've just recorded I had to do that on my phone because yeah <laughs> I haven't got a camera set up over there I have got another camera but I haven't set it up so what we want to do now is while the board is still warm so you notice I've, I've picked it up with a cloth and what we want to do now is while the board is still warm i want to clean off this flux because i don't want to leave that on the board it's going to be a lot easier to clean off when the board is warm so i'm going to do that now using some isopropyl alcohol so what i'll do is very carefully because the board is still quite warm i'll just move that to one side and i'm just going to soak my cloth in some isopropyl alcohol, 99.9%. So I'm just going to literally soak the cloth like that. There you go. I know it's a dirty cloth. It's fine. I literally just use it for this. This might sizzle a little bit. So I'm just going to give it a wipe over on the edges. It's not going to hurt the board if I leave flux there, but yeah, it's not exactly a very good practice. I can always ultrasonic the board once I'm done, if it works. I could always put the board in the ultrasonic cleaner, but it's a lot easier just to do it like this. You know, give it a nice good scrub with IPA, and I can pour a little bit on there as well. Now it's cooled down. You don't really want to pour isopropyl alcohol on the board or on the APU directly while it's still scorching hot, because you could cause thermal shock, and then you're right back to square one. So I'll just wait for it to cool down a little bit first. There we go. And that's nice and clean. So I'll add some fresh thermal paste now. I can't see any kind of popcorn in on the chip, so there's no delamination of the chip or anything like that. So that's good. Just add some fresh paste there. And I'm going to leave that thermal paste there. It's not a big deal. It's fresh paste anyway. So not a major issue. I have left the... Uh, the plate here off the board as well but again that's fine for now but yeah this is what i mean about the board not quite fitting in there snug like it's a little bit it's a little bit tight and that's not what she said apparently <laughs> pop what we need in and that essentially is going to be just the power supply because if this chip needs a reboot then I don't want to put it back together fully. It would mean doing a second video if this console needs a reboot or if I end up reboarding this to try and fix it. Because otherwise the video is going to be going on for too long. Right, moment of truth. Is it going to work? Yay or nay? The answer's yay. The answer's yay. <laughs> All right, is it going to boot up? That's the question. So, I need to hold this here first for a minute. We haven't even got a CMOS battery in here. Or a CR2032. I'll just call them CMOS batteries. But that's pairing on. Okay, that's just rebooted. That's going to go into safe mode because there's no hard drive. And white light, baby, let's go. That's what I'm talking about. All right, let's shut it down. 
Nope, maybe not. It's not going to have it. Let's just shut it down like that. Okay, and let's get it back together properly. Okay, so I've got the USB cover there, and I've got a brand new, well, no, it's not a brand new one, but that's actually out of a PS5, so it's fairly new. Uh, CR2032. And I might have damaged this when I took it out. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I think I might have to replace that. Yeah, let's replace it. I think that was me when I uh, when I took the battery out because it was holding it in properly before. But never mind, it's fine. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take one off this PS4 Pro board here. This is actually the board that I had from Tronics Fix. So I'm going to take this CR2032 battery holder from here. I'm going to heat up from underneath the board and just remove that. And then I'm going to desolder this one and heat up from underneath the board to put the new one back on. So I'll go under the microscope. That, that I think, is my fault. So, yep, yeah, like I said... Heat up from underneath, so I'll go for 480 degrees Celsius at 40% airflow. And you can see the hot air just under there. So the reason I'm heating up from underneath is because it's obviously a plastic connector and I don't want to damage it. There we go. Okay, so that's safely removed. And the board that I'm working with, it's going to have to come up from the top because there's a plastic connector very nearby and I don't want to damage it so you can see where I've bent it there you go so I'll add some leaded solder there Do a partial solder there. There we go. There we go. So that's the good thing about Kester, is he's got a nice flux content, so I didn't even need to use flux for that. I don't usually recommend soldering without flux, but yeah, on this occasion, you don't really need it. Let's just drop a new battery on there. And now, let's just confirm that the battery's all good. So, ground that. And yep, 3.02 volts, that's absolutely fine. Nothing at all wrong there, whatsoever. The HDMI port seems okay. Doesn't seem to have taken an impact. Let's pop that shield back on there. Not that it's needed, but it was there to start with, so we'll put it back drop that power supply out I'm such a lazy technician okay and that slotted in a lot nicer that time don't know why it just did okay I oh, will get this back together fully reassembled and give it a test Okay, that housing is definitely damaged. Might help if I switched it on. Okay, it turns on. 
So it needs a housing, uh, or at least it needs the top plate replacing because, yeah, that's definitely damaged. It's kind of like, you can see it there where it's indented, so that needs replacing. Uh, so I'm not going to bother cleaning this or anything like that. You know, this isn't a restoration video, it's a repair video. So I'm not going to bother cleaning it, you know, the housing and stuff. You probably could clean that housing up, but yeah, I'll probably just replace the housing. I just tested the disc drive, there's no disc in there. It's a bit of a shame, but oh well. And wow, it's on 8.01. That's an exploitable console. And that means this is worth more. That's brilliant. So this being on firmware version 8.01, that means that someone can jailbreak it so as they can install um, third-party apps and stuff like that. I'm not going to get into those details. That's not what my channel's about. But essentially, it means that this console can be hacked. But it's worth a lot more being on 8.01 anything below firmware version 9.0 is exploitable and uh, yeah that's absolutely insane 8.01 and it works perfect or at least so far let's just make sure it boots into the dashboard and whatnot and then uh, yeah we'll call it good so I'll press cancel so when it shut down I can restart it and because I've cancelled safe mode as long as the hard drive is okay, it should boot back into the dashboard. It's just because I booted it up without a hard drive the first time. Let's just check it out. Uh, there we go. Okay, was it FIFA Rage or was it Rocket League? Hmm. Well, it connects a controller up. I'm not going to connect to the internet because this is exploitable. But it does pick up my Wi-Fi. And it's obviously working on wireless controllers as well. So just for the ultimate troll, does a test disk work? <laughs> takes a disc nice and smooth this disc is absolutely filthy no it's not going to boot up with that disc okay it's struggling to load the disc but my disc is pretty scratched okay there we go that's actually picked up the disc i did just have to clean it because my disc was dirty but yeah there we go fifa 16 and that's working fine yes Another one, literally saved from the dump. Literally this time. So, yeah, that's going to be it for this video. This console appeared to have impact damage, which obviously affected the APU. So it might have seemed like I went straight for the APU on a guess. And you could be right there, because unfortunately there's no way to really test that. I could have potentially connected to the Syscon, um, that's way too complicated and to be honest I don't really know what I'm doing with the Syscon but based on my own experience when we've got impact damage when it's bad impact damage the APU is at fault and it's always the solder balls that are at fault they become cracked because of the impact the amount of pressure that's actually on the APU and then when it suddenly gets a, a big knock it cracks the APU solder balls and it results in the console not being able to pair up because it can't communicate with the rest of the system so yeah giving that a quick reflow and it should be a long-term fix i get a lot of people asking how long term it actually is and i probably get one in ten come back when i do a reflow on it when the issue is down to the gpu itself and it's actually an internal issue inside the chip then no a reflow is not viable it's not a fix but when it comes to the ps4 and cracked solder balls a reflow is absolutely viable and it is absolutely a um, a reliable repair so yeah this console should last as long as no one rages on fifa again but my brother-in-law don't really play fifa but yeah 8.01 as well that's fantastic absolutely massive win um and my brother-in-law gets a free ps4 i'll get a free video out of it so that's gonna be for this video let me know what you think down in the comments down below what would you do if your significant other threw your console down the stairs because I wouldn't be happy. I wouldn't be happy. That is a very risky move for someone to do. We all know how guys can get attached to the consoles. It's a very risky move. It's definitely an argument starter. But hey ho, such is life. My brother-in-law will look after this. It'll go in his collection. Uh, I'm sure he'll be happy when I give him the good news. So with that being said, that's going to be it for now. Thank you very much for watching. If you do want to organise a repair, consolefix.co.uk. You can book it in or you can get in touch if you've got a question about a repair. If you need any parts and tools, consolefix.shop. 
And if you do want to support the channel in any way, then head over to Twitch and link an Amazon Prime account to Twitch, and then you can subscribe to me on Twitch, absolutely free. How many times can I say Twitch in this video? Uh, um, but you can subscribe, subscribe to me absolutely free on Twitch, and uh, it doesn't cost you a penny if you've got Amazon Prime, but it does massively help me out. There's also some links in the video description to other ways that you can support me, some crypto links and things like that, as well as direct donation links if you want to support me that way. Thank you very much for watching. Check out the video that's going to pop up on the screen now, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye for now.